Well, happy Saturday, everybody. This video will kick off a week of Inky. Now, this is a fair warning to all of you that don't like Inky, but if you're open to some new ancient information, hang out with us this week. According to the Babylonian Enuma Elish, from around 1100 before the Common Era, Enki was the oldest son of the first gods, Absu and Tiamat. The Akkadian Babylonian story of the Athahasis is from the 17th century BCE and gives a version of the creation. For well over a century, scholars have recognized that the biblical story of Noah's Ark is based on these older Mesopotamian models. This is because all these flood stories deal with events that allegedly happened at the dawn of history, and they give the impression that the myths themselves must come from very primitive or earlier origins. And the myth of the global flood that destroys all life appeared early in the Old Babylonian period. Now, this was between the 20th and the 16th centuries BCE. A consensus among scholars indicates that the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, beginning with Genesis, was the product of a long and complicated process that was not completed until after the Babylonian exile in 539 BCE. So the stories were well over 1,500 years old when they were utilized for the foundational stories for Judaism. Now, I think he plays a pivotal role in the Atrahasis story. In this story, the older gods live a life of leisure and pleasure while making the younger gods do all the work in maintaining creation. The younger gods have no time to rest because there is always so much to do. And so Enki proposes that they create lesser beings who will be co-workers with them. They have no idea what to make these new creatures out of until one of the gods, Walu, volunteers himself as a sacrifice and is killed. His flesh, blood, and intelligence are kneaded into the clay of the earth by the mother goddess Ninharsek, from which she creates seven male and seven female human beings. These fourteen new creatures are exceptionally fertile, and soon there are hundreds and then thousands of people on the earth, all doing the work that once occupied the younger gods' days. At first, these people are exactly what the gods had hoped for, but as they grow in number, they become louder and more and more of a problem. Their constant noise and difficulties disturb the sleep of Enlil, the king of the gods, and they have distracted him from both his daily task and his leisure, so he decides to cut down the population through a series of plagues. He sends a drought, then pestilence, then famine, and each time the people appeal to their father, God Enki, the one who first conceived of them. He helps them by telling them what they should do to return the earth to balance and productivity and their communities to full health. And Lil is frustrated now. There seems to be even more people than when he first tried to get rid of. He convinces the other gods to allow him to unleash a great flood that will destroy humanity. And he's just powerful enough to get them all to agree. Enki recognizes the cruelty and injustice of this plan, but cannot deter Enlil. So he goes to earth and finds an honest man, Atrahasis, one who has always been both wise and kind and devoted himself to Enki. Enki whispers to him to build a big box and enter it, too kind of every animal. Atrahasis completes his mission just as the flood begins. The people cry out for help from the gods, but no help is offered. Then Herseg weeps for the people, and the other gods also mourn, but no one can stop the flood. Enlil recognizes that this flood may not have been the best idea, but it's too late now. Everyone on earth is dead. The flood waters subside, the ark comes to a rest, and Inky whispers to Atrahasis that the time has come for him to open the ship and make sacrifices to the gods. Atrahasis does so, and the sweet smell of his sacrifice floats up to heaven from which Enlil looks down to see someone has survived. He instantly knows Enki is behind this, and even though he was only just regretting what he had done, he focuses all his fury on him. Enki explains himself, however, and shows how good and kind a man Atrahasis is, 
and directs them all to the sweet sacrifice. The gods are pleased and descend to earth to eat the sacrifice. To appease Enlil, Enki proposes a new plan. The gods will create beings who are less fertile. Further humans will not be given very long lifespans. And in the time they do live, there will be opportunities daily for their death from many different causes. Now the gods agree to this proposal. And Naturhasis, the last of his kind, is spirited away to the lands of the blessed. And then Hersek creates the new creatures. Now, in every story or legend, Enki is associated with the heights and depths of universal understanding and is always seen as a friend of humanity. When given a choice between serving the will of the gods or the needs of the people, Enki always chooses human interest and always the path of compassion, forgiveness, and wisdom. So now, be sure to check out our second channel tomorrow for the Gnostic Jesus and a conversation between him and his brother James. He tells him how to get through the underworld. And don't forget Inky Week coming up on Monday with Eagle and the Servant. Thank y'all for watching and have a great day.